going to move some of these glasses. Good morning. Welcome. Thanks for joining us today. Oh, my goodness. The rumor has it. I got to talk to some people. We might take down a few of the strips so that we have a little more room. And all of the people that are vaccinated that don't mind sitting a little closer can sit there. And then we'll have all the spaces over here. So if you still want a space, we can do that. And that way we can fit a few more people in if we have to without being too crowded. Sound reasonable? OK. All right. Well, once again, thanks for joining us this morning. We are celebrating the fifth Sunday of Easter today. Um, I don't really have much for announcements other than a reminder that on Wednesday, May 12th, that'd be two weeks from now, um, we'll be celebrating Ascension Day, and we're going to do a live service in the church Wednesday night. So if you have the opportunity, join us for that. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. Um, other than that, the only other thing I have is a prayer list. And we've got a few additions again. But uh, right now we have Colton Ledeen, Dave Pearson, Linda Koppelman, Walt Schutte, John Schutte, Cheryl Hildebrandt, Bud Weston, Clarence Osmock, Madge Hool, Diane Sander, Holly Fisher, Michael Kinney, and James Lavasser. Michael's having some surgery later this week, and uh, James was in the hospital. He's having some uh, blood clot issues, and uh, so we're going to add those guys to the list and uh, pray that all goes well for them. As well as our extended prayer list, if you haven't picked it up, the um, May newsletter is in the narthex. Grab one if you haven't. That does have the new and updated extended prayer list in it, so you can grab one from there and uh, keep that with you. Pray for those folks whenever you have the opportunity. Oh, anybody else have anything? Okay. If not, as we gather today, the image Jesus uses as he proclaims the kingdom of God often come from the world of agriculture. His parables are filled with plants and trees and birds and animals, grapes, grapevines and vineyards. They're all used as illustrations by Jesus as he teaches the people who are his first hearers and us also. As people who have been grafted as branches into Christ the vine through holy baptism, we seek ways to strengthen that connection as the Holy Spirit works in and through us. We now nourish our faith as branches of Christ's vineyard as we grow in him by word and sacrament. We begin now with our opening hymn, number 465, Now All the Vault of Heaven Resounds.
Please rise. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him. Taste and see that the Lord is good. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. As penitent people, we ask God for his grace and mercy. Humble yourselves then before God. Confess your sins to him and implore his forgiveness. O oh, almighty God, most merciful Father, I, a repentant sinner, confess to you all my sins and iniquities with which I have offended you. By nature, I'm a sinful creature. In thought, word, and deed, I have continually transgressed your law. For this, I justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of the sufferings and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, be gracious and merciful to me, a penitent and contrite being. Forgive me all my sins and grant me the power of your Holy Spirit that I may amend my sinful life and bear fruit in keeping with true repentance. God be gracious to you and strengthen your faith. As you believe, so let it be. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Risen and ascended, Lord, you are the vine and we are the branches. Apart from you, there is no life. By baptism, you have grafted us into your gracious life. Cause your word to abide in us and make us fruitful to the glory of your Father, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading today comes from Acts chapter 8, and in it we see how Philip witnesses about Jesus to the Ethiopian official. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, Rise and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert place. And he rose and went. And there was an Ethiopian, a eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who was in charge of all her treasure. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning, seated in his chariot, and he was reading the prophet Isaiah. And the spirit said to Philip, Go over and join this chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and asked, Do you understand what you are reading? And he said, How can I? unless someone guides me. And he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he opens not his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe this generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. And the eunuch said to Philip, About whom, I ask you, does the prophet say this? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth, and beginning with this scripture, he told him the good news about Jesus. And as they were going along the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What prevents me from being baptized? And he commanded the chariot to stop. And they both went down into the water, 
Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord carried Philip away, and the eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotaz, and as he passed through, he preached the gospel to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our first epistle is from 1 John chapter 4, and in it John has an exhortation of how to live our lives of Christian love. John says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard was coming and now is in the world already. Little children, you are from God and have overcome them. For he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are from the world, therefore they speak from the world. And the world listens to them. We are from God. Whoever knows God listens to us. Whoever is not from God does not listen to us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, Let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love. Not that we have loved God, but that he has loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation of our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. So we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us. God is love. And whoever abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. By this is love perfected with us, so that we may have confidence for the day of judgment. Because as he is so, also are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been perfected in love. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And this commandment we have from him. Whoever loves God must also love his brother. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for our verse and gospel. Alleluia. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die. Death no longer has dominion over him. Alleluia. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. And my father will love him. And we will come to him and make our home with him. Alleluia. 
The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 15th chapter. Glory to you. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch of mine that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me, and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated for our hymn of the day, 474, Alleluia, Jesus is risen.
Grace, peace, and mercy to you from God our Father and from Jesus Christ, His Son, our Savior. Amen. I've had some comments over the last few weeks, people saying, well, how come you don't preach from the pulpit anymore? And I said, well, you know what? I, I got away from that when we had the old camera because it couldn't zoom or focus or anything like that. So I'd stand up there to be close to the camera for the people out there in internet land. But now we have the new camera and they can zoom in on me, which I, I shaved this morning. I hope they noticed, but, um, but yeah. So now I can be back in the, in the pulpit and I kind of like the pulpit. Because one of the things, I developed a new habit when I was out there. I don't know if anybody noticed it. I, got, I would do this a lot when I was thinking because I didn't have anything to hold on to. So, so now we'll see if that goes away now that I'm here in the pulpit. I don't know how many of you recognize the name of Captain, or sometimes known as Chaplain, Ernst Gordon. Anybody recognize the name? Ernst Gordon wrote a book a book called Through the Valley of Kwai. That might give you a hint. Now, you might recognize Ernst a little bit. That book tells about the hardship that prisoners of war during World War II that were held by the Japanese in Thailand went through. The men wrote Chaplain Gordon, were reduced to skeletons, riddled with disease, and the only way they could survive was by the law of the jungle. Every man for himself. They hated, they cursed, they stole, they watched one another die, and they looked forward to death as their only means of escape. Now, a few prisoners decided that this was not the way that they wanted to live. They began to study their Bibles. They would, they would offer prayers for the dying. And the atmosphere of the prison, the prison by the river of Kwai, where they would build the bridge over the river Kwai, and this camp, the atmosphere in that prison began to change. Eventually, they, they built a worship center and many of the men began to come to worship. And this, this reawakening of faith affected a miraculous change. In the morale of the prisoners, instead of living by the law of the jungle, every man for himself, men were now willing to help one another, to care for one another, to love one another, Chaplain Gordon writes, this church of the spirit, which the worship center was called, was the throbbing heart which gave life to the camp and transformed it in considerable measure from a mass of frightened individuals into a caring community. From this renewal, we received the inspiration that made life possible. This inspiration was not a Pollyanna view of life, but a realistic view which says life is more than the animal instinct to survive. It is a noble life, where men are seen as people who have self-worth inspire the circumstances of life. The Spirit of God gave to these men the strength to live, to care, to love but not from mere physical endurance, from the inner strength which believes and trusts that somehow, in spite of all the pain, God is there. The, the miracle of life, the dignity of self-worth, the importance of human life became apparent again in that prison camp when the men began to realize or re-realize that they were children of God. They attached themselves to God's spirit, and they did it through prayer, through Bible study, and through worship. As Jesus said in the gospel lesson, I am the vine, you are the branches. 
He who abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Our story of the prison camp underscores this statement of Jesus. Once the men were in Christ, they were able to, they were able to bear fruit. To be all kinds of men and to be the kind of men that Jesus had called them to be. To be the kind of person that Jesus would call us to be. Jesus is using a story from his day to make a point about being attached to him. Being in the body of Christ. Being a member of that community of believers. Jesus is saying the only way, the only way for the branches of the vine to grow is to be attached to the vine. Attached to the main part. It's from the main part of the vine that the branches get their food, their strength, their nourishment. It's only there that they can bear fruit. And Jesus is saying, so it is with, with all of you. All of you who belong to the body of Christ. The only way you can bear fruit, the only way you can stay alive, alive in your faith, is to be attached to the body. This body, the church, to the worship life, to the good news of Christ, which we proclaim here each and every Sunday. And Wednesday. I'm going to give you a little visual picture. This is from my, my first attempt at gardening. It was uh, two years ago. We moved out on the farm. I, on the farm, I've got to garden, right? It goes hand in hand. So I planted some stuff. And one of the things I planted was cucumbers. I hate cucumbers. I love pickles. That's, there's the end goal. June likes cucumbers. She ate some of the cucumbers. I don't think I ever got any pickled. But anyway, as I began to watch these cucumbers grow, the, the plants come up, and pretty soon they start pff, taking off in all directions. And then they get the little yellow blossoms on the end, and they start climbing up things. And pretty soon they were starting to produce all these nice little cucumbers. And in anticipation of possibly making pickles, I started picking some of the cucumbers. Well, in my newnessness at gardening, I didn't realize how careful you had to be with the branches. And every now and then, I would pull a little too hard or step a little someplace where I shouldn't, and you would break a branch. And what would happen? I'd come back a day or two later and well, why did all of these flowers fall off? Why did these cucumbers stop growing? Why are the leaves turning brown? Well, I separated the vine from the branch, and they died. Now, I did notice one thing. This isn't part of the sermon, but I noticed. I had a couple where I broke them partway, and I was actually able to bring a branch back together with the vine at least to grow the cucumber long enough. So you, there's, there's a chance of coming back. We can't bear fruit if we're not connected to the vine. Jesus says it is with us. That's the way it is with you and I. We're part of this Christian community. We're apart from the community of our faith, our, our acts of love, our trust, our commitment to Jesus Christ. It begins to die. Jesus says we need to remain faithful to him and to the community, to the church. Because it's here in our community of faith where we receive the strength to live and be in Christ. It's here where Jesus has promised to be in his word and in his sacraments. I did it again. <laughs> 
It's here Sunday morning in worship that we're reminded again and again about the love God has for us through his son, Jesus Christ. It's here through the word spoken, through, through the gifts that we've received of bread and wine, through a hand extended in love that we see and experience God's love, new and fresh, each time you come to worship. I have a question. A great number of you experienced over this last year some time of separation from the church. Because of the COVID, we shut down for a couple of months last year. Sometimes people have been hesitant to come back. What did it feel like when you first came back? Did you feel the renewal? Did you feel the growth? Did you feel that connection, rejoining with Christ? That repair of that severance between the branch and the vine? Today, as you come, as you come to eat and to drink, you'll be reminded You'll experience in a very physical way through the body and blood how much Christ loves you. In that experience, you will receive nothing other than God himself through Jesus. This morning in the service, we, we have a visible and very real way that we encounter the forgiveness of God. It's a cleansing of God, a renewal, a strengthening of that vine branch connection. Through that bread and wine of the Lord's Supper, today as you come, as you come to eat and drink, you will be reminded again. You will experience in a very physical way through the body and blood. God's love for you. His forgiving power in your life. In this meal, your sins are forgiven. And you, at the same time, are given the power of Almighty God to continue to bear fruit as part of the vine of Christ. Communion is a both and. That's a, a both and slash, and experience. At one and the same time, God, through Christ's body and blood, comes to you in a very personal way and assures you of forgiveness of all those things which remind you daily that we aren't always what God intended for us to be. But then at the same time, because it is God himself whom you are encountering, you're filled with his power to continue to bear fruit as part of the vine of Christ. There's a pastor out there by the name of Michael Rognes, and he wrote a book called The Sacrament of the Lord's Supper, or pardon me, the book's name is The Hand That Holds Me by Pastor Michael Rognes. And he said, the sacrament of the Lord's Supper is the most sublime movement of the Christian life, the most awe-filled moment, but also at the same time the most human. There at the Lord's table, God comes to us. The overwhelming, majestic creator of all the galaxies, right where we are most human and worried about so many mundane and human things. There, through the bread and wine, God comes. He stoops way down and comes to us in the common elements of bread and wine. It it doesn't matter that we're not perfect. 
God chooses to come to us in our sinfulness to forgive us, to cleanse us, to prune us, to make us able to bear more fruit for him. Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. We need to be part of the the vine so that we may bear much fruit. Bearing fruit, in this case, means to offer a helping hand to one another. Bearing fruit means to share your faith with one another. Bearing fruit means to walk with one another as they experience life and sometimes the brokenness of life. Being part of the vine means we also need each other. I remember a song from my youth. I'm going to test some of you guys now. I know that there's a fair share of you out there that are my age and or older. <laughs> Um, the band was the Letterman. Remember the Letterman? The year was 1965. And the song goes, No man is an island. No man stands alone. Each man's joy is joy to me. Each man's grief is my own. We need one another, and I will defend each man as my brother, each man as my friend. Remember the song? Yeah. We do not stand alone in our faith. As part of the vine of Christ, we need... And we do, sometimes whether you realize it or not, we rely on each other. I've quoted Dietrich Bonhoeffer before. Dietrich Bonhoeffer was a pastor in Germany during World War II. He was executed just weeks before the war ended. He wrote a book called Life Together, he wrote a number of books. He said, God has willed that we should seek and find his living word in the witness of a brother, in the mouth of a man. Therefore, the Christian needs another Christian who speaks God's words to him. He needs him again and again when he becomes uncertain and discouraged. For by himself, he cannot help himself without belying their truth. He needs his brother man as a bearer and proclaimer of the divine word of salvation. He needs his brother solely because of Jesus Christ. The Christ in his own heart is weaker than the Christ in the word of his brother. His own heart is uncertain. His brother's is sure. In this vine of faith, I need your faith, each and every one of you. I need your faith to help me sustain my faith. And each of you needs my faith and those around you's faith to sustain your faith. And when we do that, then we can go and proclaim the faith to those who are not yet attached to the vine. We proclaim and we act. I think I've said it before, but I don't, and I don't even know where the quote comes from, but it's often said that the best sermons are lived, not preached. It means that we're not just to proclaim the gospel, but that we are to live the gospel, to reach out a hand to one another. We need to be alive in Christ
as we are attached to the vine, the vine, this church, it should make us alive. It should make us vibrant in Christ. Many years ago, some prospectors were panning for gold in Montana. When one of them found an unusual stone, they broke it open and saw it contained gold. Working eagerly, the men soon discovered a tremendous pile of that precious metal. And with unrestrained delight, they shouted, We found it! We're rich! We found the gold! Before going to town for supplies, they agreed not to tell a soul about their find. And while in town, not one of them breathed a word about their discovery. But when they were ready to return to their camp, a group of men gathered around them and were ready to follow them. And the group of men said, you found gold. Who told you? said the prospectors. No one, they replied. Your face showed it. Does your very being show that you are attached to the vine of Christ? I am the vine. You are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Well, last week, for the catechism, we did the first article of the Apostles' Creed, and today we're going to do the second. As we celebrate the risen Christ this Easter season, we now speak together the words of the, oh no, we're not, well, Apostles' Creed regarding our Savior, the second person of the Holy Trinity. Okay, I almost threw myself off. Here we go. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. What does this mean? I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father from eternity, and also true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord, who has redeemed me, a lost and condemned person, purchased and won me from all sins, from death, and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy, precious blood, and with his innocent suffering and death, that I may be his own and live under him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness, just as he is risen from the dead, lives and reigns to all eternity. This is most certainly true. Friends in Christ, I urge you to lift up your hearts to God and pray with me as Christ our Lord has taught us and freely promised to hear us. God, our Father in heaven, look with mercy on us, your needy children on earth, and grant us grace that your holy name be hallowed by us and all the world through the pure and true teaching of your word, and the fervent love shown forth in our lives. Graciously turn from us all false doctrine and evil living, whereby your precious name is blasphemed and profaned. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May your kingdom come to us and expand. Bring all transgressors and those who are blinded and bound in the devil's kingdom to know Jesus Christ, your Son, by faith that the number of Christians may be increased. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Strengthen us by your spirit according to your will, both in life and in death, 
in the midst of both good and evil things, that our own wills be crucified daily and sacrificed to your good and gracious will. Into your hands we commend Colton, Dave, Linda, Walt, John, Cheryl, Bud, Clarence, Madge, Diane, Holly, Michael, James, all of those on our extended prayer list and those we name now in our hearts. We pray for all who are in need, praying for them at all times. Thy will be done. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant us our daily bread. Preserve us from greed and selfish cares, and help us trust in you to provide for all our needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Forgive us our sins as we also forgive those who sin against us, so that our hearts may be at peace and may rejoice in a good conscience before you, that no sin may ever frighten or alarm us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lead us not into temptation, O Lord, but help us by your spirit to subdue our flesh, to turn from the world and its ways, and to overcome the devil with all his wiles. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And lastly, O Heavenly Father, deliver us from all evil of both body and soul, now and forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We trust, O Lord, in your great mercy to hear and answer us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This is something new. A custom in many agricultural areas around the world is to use one of the Sundays of Easter season to ask God's blessing on the seed and soil as a new cycle of sowing and growing begins. So on this day of special prayer known as Rogation Sunday, we ask God's blessing on the seed that is planted, on the soil that is cultivated, and all those who labor in the fields of our land. Let us pray. Almighty God, you bless the earth to make it fruitful, bringing forth in abundance whatever is needed for the support of our lives. Bless the seed and the soil that there may be growth, and gracious abundance in the time of harvest. Prosper the work of farmers and all those who labor to bring food to our table. Grant them seasonable weather, that they may gather in the fruits of the earth and proclaim your goodness with thanksgiving. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. All right. This is where we would normally have the offering. Just a reminder that... Uh, basket in the back where you can drop your envelope or you can uh, drop it in the mailbox outside anytime during the week. You can mail it to the church at our wonderful 1111 11th Avenue West address. I always like that number. There are people out there when I tell them that don't believe me. But I also like to take a moment to thank you all for your stewardship, particularly during this time of separation. If you would, please rise as we continue with the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and proper that we should give thanks to you, Lord our God. For you have shown mercy to all in Christ our Redeemer, the vine divine. Receive our thanks that as branches of the vine, we are created to bear fruit. Unite our praises with those of all the faithful who are connected to Christ and join them with the unending praise of the angels and archangels and all the company of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given up for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Remembering your mercy, O Lord, and how our Savior suffered upon the cross, died the death that was ours to die, rose to bestow us upon us the life that death cannot overcome, ascended to the glory of the Father's right hand, and sent forth the Spirit to lead us into faith. We pray you to bring to conclusion all that our Savior began, and deliver us that everlasting life and light in heaven forevermore. Hear us as we pray with one voice the prayer he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God, you take away the sin. Mercy on us, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. You may be seated. All right. Um. I think we've got the process down pretty well, but we'll go uh, do the outside sections first. One of the things I might mention that kind of works if we try and keep the cycle going, if when you come up, you come up from the center aisle, and then when you go back, go back on the outer aisle, then we don't have people bumping into each other going both ways. Make sense? Okay. And then you guys, you guys, however you want to do it. <laughs> But we'll do these two groups first. And remember, just we have one station on each end. And just uh, don't rush that. Um, after we're finished with communion, drop your cup in the basket. And then in the narthex, if you didn't notice when you came in, I remembered to make coffee today. The coffee's there. Yes, Jasper, coffee. And, uh, and there's also some cookies out there. And you can... Uh, Mingle Narthex parking lot wherever wherever you'd like to feel comfortable mingling, and uh, enjoy, and we'll look forward to seeing you again next week, my friends. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor, and to give you peace. Amen. Christ is our cornerstone.